How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another lead code question. Today our question is from Amazon and it's called Combination Sum 2. Okay guys, so today our problem is from Amazon. It's called Combination Sum 2. And our problem description says, given a collection of candidate numbers, candidates, and a target number target, find all unique combinations in candidates where the candidate numbers sums to target. And it tells us that each number in candidates may only be used once in the combination. And as a quick note, all the numbers, including our target, will be positive, so we won't have to worry about weird edge cases and things like that. And the solution set must not contain duplicate combination. All right, so that's probably a lot to take in, so let's look at a quick example. So for inputs 10, 1, 2, 7, 6, 1, 5, and our target's 8. So again, that's just asking from all these numbers, what are the unique combinations of these numbers that can sum to this target? A solution set would be 1 and 7, right, because that sums to 8. 1, 2, and 5, again, sums to 8. 2 and 6 sums to 8. And 1 plus 1 plus 6 also sums to 8. So those are all the unique combinations that sum to our target 8, given this uh, candidate array. And just to point out, we have two ones here, right, and one seven. So technically, we could have had two combinations or two permutations, probably, I should say, of one and seven twice, right? But that's not actually valid because we already have one and seven here. So it only wants unique combinations. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? So just as a hint or a tip, I feel like typically when you're asked for combinations or permutations, a really easy way to do this is some sort of like DFS with recursion. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to write a recursive function. And what it's basically going to do is simulate taking and not taking whatever element we're currently on. So if we're sitting at the first element at the very beginning, we're going to simulate taking or not taking that number. And we're basically going to do both of them. Okay. And so what we could really do is we could just walk through our candidate array, simulate taking and not taking each of these numbers at every single step. And basically what we'll do is we'll end up with very unique lists. Um, and we could just essentially, you know, check, whether or not that list at any given moment sums to our target. And if it does, we'll just add that combination that we currently have to our result list, right? Our list of lists that we need to return here. Um, and hopefully that'll just about do it. So that just kind of leaves one other thing, which is the fact that we can't have duplicates, right? So we can't have duplicates here. So I feel like a very sort of like obvious way initially to think about this is we could use like a hash set, but then it kind of becomes a mess trying to convert our list that we currently have into something that can be represented in the hash set. So it would kind of be annoying to have a list of five numbers and then maybe walk through those numbers, add it to a string and then throw that string in the hash set. And then every single time we generate a combination and it sums to the target, is this already in our hash set? Well, now we have to convert that to a string. It just becomes a mess. So I think a really easy way to kind of avoid this and avoid doing extra work and finding duplicate uh, combinations is we can actually just sort our array. So if we sort our array, we know that our numbers are in a very particular order to begin with. And so as we walk through that array, all we have to do is basically check, hey, are these two numbers next to each other the same? And if they are, well, we only need to do it for one of them, right? So if that's the case and they are the same, once we've done it for one, we're just going to move on and skip that because we're doing duplicate work. So that's a high level of how we're going to do this. I'm going to walk us through the code as we continue going through this problem. But let's get started. So the first thing that we should probably do is just make that list of lists to return. So we're going to say list of list of integer. And we're going to call this result equals new array list. Awesome. So now we say we just want to sort our numbers, right? So we know that we're walking through a candidate array in a very specific order. So we're going to say arrays.sort candidates. Awesome. And now we're going to actually make a recursive function that's going to generate all our combinations and basically do the meat of the problem. So we're going to say find combinations, and we're going to need to pass it our candidates. We're going to need to pass it the index that we're at. We're going to need to pass it the target, so we know whenever we've summed to the target. We're going to pass it a new array list of integers. And again, this is going to represent the current list that we have, because at every step we're saying, I'm either going to take or not take this number. So we're going to simulate uh, actually picking those numbers, so we need to put them somewhere. And then the last thing we actually need to do is pass our results uh, list of lists, right? So that every time we find a combination, we could just add it to this result list. So finally, once that's actually done and this recursive function returns, all we should have to do really is return our result. And so if we do this correctly, that will really be it for the problem. So now let's write the function that's really gonna do the work, so find combination. So public void, it's not gonna return anything, right? It's just gonna add to our results list. We're gonna say find combinations. And now what are we taking? We're taking an integer array called candidates. 
we are taking an int called index, right? This is gonna represent where we are in our numbers. We're gonna take a list of integers, and this is gonna be called current because these are the current numbers we've picked. And then we're also going to take a list of list of integers, and this is going to be our results. Okay, cool. So now what, guys? So now what we need to do is we just need to first check the condition that we're looking for, right? So we said that every single time that we take a number, we're actually gonna no longer be looking for that target, right? We're gonna be looking for whatever our target is minus the value that we just chose and added to our list. So what that really translates to is that if our target's ever zero, then we've actually found a valid combination. So we're gonna say is we're gonna say if our target is equal to zero, and again, this is gonna be our base case, right? Because our base case is what's gonna stop our recursion. So if our target's ever actually zero, we've found what we want, right? We found the combination that actually sums to our target. So we're gonna say result.add current, and then we need to put a return statement, right? Because we only have positive numbers in our candidate list. So there's no way that if we actually reach the target, we're gonna like somehow go lower than the target and find uh, another unique combination. So that's our first base case. And then similarly, if our target uh, is actually less than zero, right? So if we've taken so many numbers into our list, their target has actually become negative. There's no point in continuing either because we're not gonna find any uh, you know, additional negative numbers that would bring our target back to some positive value or some higher value. So if our target is less than zero, we simply just wanna return. Okay, now this is the interesting part, right? So now the interesting part is us actually simulating for every single number, taking and not taking that number, so what we can actually do is just a simple DFS with a loop. So we're gonna say for int i equals index. So whatever index we're at, right, we're gonna go through the rest of the candidates. So i is less than candidates that way, i plus plus. And now before we actually do the work, we need to have our check for duplicates, right? So we're gonna say if i is equal to our index. So if this is the first iteration of the loop that we're actually on, right, if there is no previous number or so if that doesn't get tripped, we need to check if the numbers are duplicates. So if i is equal to index or candidates i is not equal to candidates of i minus one. And so again, this is just saying, okay, if we're not at the first iteration or, or sorry, if we are at the first iteration or the two numbers that we're currently on, right? The one number we're currently on, if that's not the same as the previous number, right? So if we're not gonna just do duplicate work, let's do that work. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate taking the number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the current number in candidates to our current list. So we're gonna say current.add candidates i. Awesome. Now we've actually added the number. So what we need to do now is we need to make a recursive call, right? Simulating having taken that number. So we're gonna say find combinations. We're gonna pass our candidates again. We're gonna pass our index, right? So index plus one or sorry, this should really be i because we're in this loop now. So i plus one, which is again, just incrementing the index. We're gonna pass, oh, I didn't even, oh, I didn't write our target here. That's what that is. Okay, so now we need our target. So int target, sorry guys. Um, so we have our candidate, we just incremented our index. Now we need to decrement from our target, right? Because we just took a number. So we're no, longer, we're no longer looking for our target, but we're looking for our target minus the value we just took. So target minus candidates i, and then we also are gonna pass our current list, right? Which we just added the current element to, and then we're gonna pass our results. Awesome, so now we just made the recursive call simulating taking that number. So now when that recursive call actually returns, we wanna remove the number that we just took, right? So that will help us simulate not taking that number. So we're gonna say current.remove current.size minus one. Okay, so that's really it, guys. Once this actually runs for all the numbers, we will have basically simulated taking and not taking every single element in our candidate list. And then in the, you know, in the, while doing that, right? Meanwhile, while doing that, we're actually going to have tripped these cases. So this is really the important one. So if our target's ever zero, we're actually gonna add that combination that we have to our result list in return. So once this uh, initial call returns, we will just be returning our result. And so just to talk about the runtime quickly, guys, I think the runtime would be O of N in terms of space complexity, because all our recursive calls are gonna go as deep as however many candidates we have. And then I think our actual runtime would be two to the N because we're generating all these different combinations. And again, that kind of just comes from, we have two choices, right, at every step. We have N numbers and we have two choices at every step, either take or not take that number. So again, runtime is gonna be two to the N, and I think the space complexity will be O of N. 
So let's run this code, make sure that it works. Oh no, what I did. Oh, I spelled this wrong. <laughs> Bind combinations. Let's make sure that it works now. It doesn't because I'm not adding a new array list. Sorry, new array list uh, current. Because we need to add a copy of it. So again, let's run it and make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve combination sum two in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon. If you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor, leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time.